Hey guys, what's going on? This is Eric Broadus and welcome again to my channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. I say welcome again. And for this episode, I just want to cover some military content, just a, a quick topic. And what I want to name this um, video is Recovering from Failure in the Military. Again, Recovering from Failure in the Military. Now, obviously, um, failure in the military can <laughs> come in different ways <laughs> or different forms. Um, you know, you can fail to maybe not get a promotion. You can fail to not get, say, maybe a certain assignment or deadline met. You can fail as a follower, not obeying lawful orders given to those that are over you. You can fail in leadership to um, lead um, your subordinates and those that are supposed to follow you. There are many ways to fail in the military, but for the sake of this video, I am briefly going to touch on recovering from failure in the military. And this video is for those that are currently serving, whether you're active duty, um, guard, reserve, whatever. And it's for um, those that are also going to become future recruits who are um, considering serving in the armed forces. And even for my fellow vets that have or, or already served, you know. But recovering from failure in the military. Now, the um, United States Armed Forces are um, governed by a separate rule of law. Now... Um, that rule of law in the armed forces is called um, UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And the Uniform Code of Military Justice is obviously based off of the Constitution of the United States, but the armed forces is unique in this regard. The armed forces, a lot of times um, military members may serve in locations that are outside the United States jurisdiction. So as a result, they had to come up with uh, a separate rule of law to govern uh, military members. Now, understand something. Military members are still um, subject to um, the local laws of the host country they're serving in. And even if, when they're at home, uh, military members are subject to um, the local rules, you know, of the of the state, city, whatever, you know, saying county, just like um, any other um, American citizen, and it's the same when military members go abroad. They still have to obey the laws of uh, of that host country and whatever its um, territories, prefectures, um, districts, whatever you want to call it. They still have to obey that. Obey that. But. Um, with the military, you can experience something known as double jeopardy, meaning that if you commit a crime on the civilian side, regardless of uh, whatever country and whether it's domestic or if it's foreign, um, you can be tried by um, um, that civilian government, you know, to include our own, and then after, they're, after they have finished um, um, handing you out punishment, then you can be turned back over to your branch of service and then your branch of service is definitely going to deal out some more punishment so you you can be um, punished twice for the same crime but anyway um so let me move away from that but in terms of recovering from failure in the military i mean um maybe you didn't get the promotion you thought you should have gotten maybe you missed it by a hair you know um maybe you might have failed um in some courses Maybe you experience some type of um, um, discipline from your superiors that you felt might have been a bit unfair. Or maybe in this case you might have um, messed up and experienced some epic failure. Now, um, let me say this. Um, so long as um, you have adequate time left in your career, you can recover, you know. There, there's still a chance to, re, um, to recover. I've known um, many of um, people that I've met from every different branch of service that they had some mess ups in their careers and they were still able to turn around and be successful. 
And for those of you that may be, um, say maybe you had a mess up in your career and you're going to have to transition to get out, um, all hope is not lost. So long is in most cases if you don't drop down no lower than say a general discharge. A general discharge um, for characterization of service, um, you can reapply in six months and it can be upgraded to honorable. And the importance of making sure that you get out with, a, um, with an honorable discharge, and if it happens to be general, you can get it you know, um, upgraded, is this, that there's certain perks and benefits that do come with serving honorably in the military, and even if you happen to get a general, you can still um, get certain perks or benefits you know with that but you obviously want to come out with an honorable you know um, the benefits and perks are range from everything from um, you know getting um, points you know on federal um, state you know what I'm saying um, county you know city you know you get extra points for being a veteran and also there are certain doors or pathways that can be open to you as a veteran if you serve honorably you know but I just want to let me move on because now I'm going into something different, but recovery from failure in the military. Um, I'm going to share an experience that um, happened to me. Now, um, understand something that in the military, what may be um, considered um, punishable in the military or something that may seem like it's a big deal on the civilian side, sometimes it's like, um, it's like, wow, you know, it's not um, n no big deal, but sometimes in the military, um, the rules can be they can be a bit stiffer because they hold us to a higher standard but make a long story short um, I was participating in a military exercise and for those of you that may not be familiar with it a military exercise is um, they're periodically um, carried out to keep the armed forces um, ready for um, combat in different types of situations so what they do they'll um, they have a script and they'll um, develop these um, these exercise scenarios that military members have to participate in, like they're in a combat zone, or dep it depends on what scenario that they want to create. But what it is, it's training to prepare um, the armed forces for different situations, and most in most cases, mostly um, for battle to simulate like we're at war. Now, uh, that being said. Um, you have certain um, graders or instructors known as the inspector generals. Those are um, the graders doing a military exercise that they're going around, they're observing, they're watching to see how military members are doing while they're participating in these exercises. From everything, how you're following the rules, how you handle yourself, and they may throw um, pressurized situations to see exactly how you do. And these instructors, they have obviously, or these inspector generals, they have certain um, authority on the IG team. You know, they can either um, take you out of an exercise, and these um, there's there's certain ways to get taken out. One is um, known as you got a, a good kill, or there's a dumb kill. Now, a good kill simulates that um, you were say maybe killed in action, that you know for something honorable. A dumb kill is when you were unnecessarily killed for something that the IG considers that didn't have to be or that was foolish or, or dumb, okay? And so, um, in my case, um, this is a, a true story that happened to me. Now, I had, um, I was at assigned at this particular location and I had strung together uh, several years of um, superior performances in a row. And in the military, it, um, it takes, you know, some sacrifice and dedication to get um, top performance because you have to wear many different hats. And what, you know, I had done, I had taken, um, you know, leadership roles of different organizations. I mean, I, I've done uh, a combination of, of different things, you know, from um, leadership, you know, of subordinates. I mean, you name it, you know, saying from um, job expertise, all of it. Had done it, and what happened is that I made a simple error while um, coming into the base to um, getting ready to, to transition to give my chem code so I could participate in the exercise. Uh, myself and there, I believe there was a couple of others, we accidentally had parked, you know, in one spot over which was reserved for the, for the IG team. 
And so what happened is that, um, I don't know, maybe the, that IG member, he had a bad day. And what he did, he just didn't even give us a chance to um, get back in our vehicles and get out of the spot. And so we can go into the play zone. And so he just gave me a card here, you're dead, you know. And um, it, on the card, it explained the reason why, you know what I'm saying. I had gotten the um, dumb kill, and so I had to go to the, um, to the tactical... Um, operations center <laughs> and when when you have to go to the tactical operations center that's where the um where the big wigs are you know that's where your your base commander is going to be and for whatever branch of service you know it could be fleet or whatever like that if you're navy or marines but you know um for those that are on the ground you know it, it's going to tactical operations but for military members you guys from the navy and coast guard you pretty much understand the gist it's, it's the big big dogs and so when I had to go in there and before all that brass and granted I was a non-commissioned officer at, at the time of a certain um, grade level and um, he specifically said um, the failure wasn't on me this was a failure of, of leadership how could you not have known this and so he had demanded that something be done and so what he did he went down the food chain so every little um, level of leadership beneath him all the way to my commander, you know, all the way to um, to my um, to my boss, had them standing in um, service dress, explaining um, why a non-commissioned officer had um, gotten a dumb kill for um, such a futile mistake. And what happened is that I had about maybe two weeks before I was due for another performance rating, and I had, I mean, I worked hard, I put the work in, but. Because of that dumb kill, and, um, and let me go off to a dumb kill real quick, okay? Um, when you get a dumb kill in the military, they're going to put you on doing an exercise. You go on, you're going to do some, some additional labor. And you either digging ditches or you're filling sandbags. But and they're going to make you sweat to give you something to think about. <laughs> why, why, you, um, why you got this foolish kill. But anyway, um, because it had um, gotten all the way up to the... Um, the base commander um when it came time for my performance rating they couldn't keep it in house and so what happened that cost me on my performance rating i was instead of getting superior i got knocked down and what that did that set me back from trans getting ready to transition um in the future two grades up you know, um, there's certain certain grades that you can transition through in, in the military, but when you start going for um, like more like senior leadership, you're normally going to start uh, preparing for that at least two grades down. So if you're at an E7 and, and you want to make it to say um, um, E8 and E9, for E9 you should already been preparing while you're E7. If you want to make it to E8, you should have been preparing you know why you're in E6 and it would be the same for the officers which which in officers case is some um, even even tighter for them um, they can't get so much as a I think a letter of reprimand would probably kill their career but just to give you an example of how stringent it was but um, for me that was a setback because I put all that hard work in for you know several years to string together superior performances and something so simple and so small but in the perception of uh, the strategic leadership's eyes, they considered it unacceptable for my rank and grade. You know, and so that cost me. And so my boss had no choice but to um, mark me down after the work I did, all that hard work I did that entire year was superior. And it just, boom, gone. And now you talk about failure and disappointment, but I didn't allow that to stop me. You know, I think at the time I still had like about, um, what, probably another, um, I think five or six years left, I think, in the military. But, you know, I still um, went on, you know, picked the pieces up, you know, and had to recover from that. So what I'm saying to you guys that are, you know, even to those that um, um, will, event, will serve um, in the future is that in um, the military, there's going to be um, times where you're going to fail or make mistakes or mess up like we all do. But... The main thing that you got to do is um, figure out, you know, okay, what it is, where you messed up at, you know, maybe um, analyze it for a little bit, you know, and then, okay, all right, this is where I messed up, and let me make sure that I don't make this mistake again, and how can I fix it? 
so that I don't repeat the same mistake twice. And then after you've done that, you know, move on. You know, don't sit there and draw on it because I, I have personally known people from every branch of service that, um, that had mess ups in their career. Some of them had gotten Article 15s, non-judicial punishment. You know, they screwed up and, and messed up. And I've known um, some guys that made E9, you know, and that, you know, that's the highest level on the enlisted side um, that had gotten Article 15s in their career. You know, so it's, it, it's not over. You know, if you fail a test or an exam, if you fail your PT test, you know, don't give up. Don't get discouraged, you know. Um, figure out, you know, find out exactly where you were graded at and where you failed at. And go back, go train, put the hard work in, whatever it requires, diet, whatever. You know, go back, you know, and, and get it done. Make, make it happen and then do what you got to do to make sure that you pass um, your physical fitness um, exam, you know, and you move on. And it's the same thing else with any other area um, in your career, whether it's bad leadership or whether maybe you you legitimately did mess up or maybe you felt you got um, written up, you know what I'm saying, or in some type of trouble that you didn't think that it should be. Don't stay there and dwell on it. You know, move on. You know, many times we can learn a lot from bad leadership, you know, many t more so than we can from good leadership. You know, bad leadership would definitely teach you some things. You know, about, you know, how to work um, through that and also not to repeat that. But I just wanted to throw this out there, you know, um, for you guys, you know. Um, recovering from failure in the military, um, it's not over. You know, it's not over. If you got enough time in your career where you're still in the military, you can recover. You know, don't let um, that um, letter of reprimand or that letter of counseling or admonishment or um, that Article 15, you know, don't let that stop you, you know. Okay, it happened, it's over, you go through whatever the um, trial period or the, the period of, of punishment. Once you get through that, you know, hey, don't make the same mistake again. Push forward, you know, um, make sure you make improvements. D um, do better, be better, you know. But it, it's not the end of the world. I, believe me, I've seen it, you know, I, I have seen it. If you miss promotion, um, find out how much you missed it by. Um, what do you need to um, correct, you know, or what do you need to add or retool up on to make sure that you make the cutoff and get your line number, you know? And for officers, it's the same thing. I know you guys have it even um, more stringent because you guys are operating at the strategic level, but it's the same thing. Same thing, you know? And in the event, if you, you know, you have to um, transition out of the military, be um, cause of failure, you know, you can still um, still recover, you know, but especially if you've gotten no lower than getting, getting out with an honorable discharge, you know, you can, you can, you can definitely still work through that because you got an honorable discharge. And if you get out with a general, just reapply for honorable in six months and you can be upgraded. But don't give up, guys, you know, but recovering from failure in the military. It has been done, it can be done, and it will be done. All right, guys, um, that's all I have for this um, video. And the name of um, my YouTube channel is Eric Broadus YouTube. That's um, E R I C B R O A D U S um, YouTube or Eric Broadus YouTube.com. So um, thank, thanks to all my subs and thank you guys for um, watching the video and listening. And tap that bell to become a subscriber. Um, smash that like button. Leave comments. I'd love to dialogue with you. And please share my channel. Share it. Put it out. Whatever um, friends you know, word of mouth, um, you know, your um, social media platforms, put it out there, you know, so that others can, um, you know, hear the message and, you know, hey, join along for the ride. And I also have a podcast called Snacks Podcast, and that's S-N-A-K-Z, um, Snacks Thoughts, S-N-A-K-Z-T-H-O-U-G-H-T-S, Snacks Thoughts. And you can find me on Anchor, Spotify, um, Spreaker, um, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Radio PPM, SoundCloud, and a various host of other social um, media. So please um, join that also and leave comments there too. But again, guys, the name of this um, video is Recovering from Failure in the Military. It does happen, but people do recover and they move on to have successful careers. That's all I have. Peace out, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.